Welcome to Accelerate My Practice. So glad you could join me here today. Today I want to talk about why people make changes. How can we utilize this with our patients, with our team members, all the above. And all of this comes out of an article that was written by, I should have uh, looked that up ahead of time I guess. Can't see the author. Anyway, it was written by some lady. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fabulous article. And, and I like how she starts off the whole article. And she starts off the article with people don't buy products, they buy better versions of themselves. And so I want to relate that to our interaction with our patients as well as if you're the leader of the team, how you interact with the team itself. Because I think there's so much power in this whole metaphor. I think it's really, really good. And the challenge I see, I, don't, I will start with patients first. The challenge I see is when we talk to patients about dentistry, I don't care if it's a crown and bridge, if it's fillings, if it's implants, we tend to focus on, as is in the old world, the feature and the benefit. And it's interesting to really stop and think about what's the difference between features and benefits and how can we use this to apply and be more effective in our conversations. And the way I kind of see it, the feature is the thing. The benefit is what it does for somebody, how it makes them a better version of themselves, so to speak. You know, one of the first versions of this theory that was espoused was when the iPod came out. You know, if you remember back to when the iPod, iPod came out, there were MP3s, Sony was kind of dominating the market with the MP3 technology. And then all of a sudden, Steve Jobs comes out with this iPod. And at the time, everybody's competition relative to the MP3s was storage size. You know, we've got a half a gig, we have a gig, we have this. We have, it was just a big race relative to who could make the most memory on the MP3 player in order to dominate the market. And of course, now you think back to, does anybody have an MP3 player? It doesn't exist. You either have an iPod or you're playing music on your phone. Now, the, And generally, it, at least back in the day, it started off with just the iPod. So the question becomes, how did they leapfrog over the top of Sony who was dominating the market? And I'll tell you how. Steve Jobs came out, held up his little iPod, it was a little white one, it actually was pretty big considered, compared to what they are now. But he came out with it and he said, you know what? With this device, we can put a thousand songs in your pocket. And what he clearly did is he didn't talk about the feature of we have this size memory. Instead he talked about the benefit and how it allowed somebody quantifiably to understand why they should buy that device. Because let's face it, still today, 15 years later, or however much later it is, if I were to come to you and go, hey, one gig of memory on your device, how many songs can you hold? You're going to be like, I don't know. Because we don't have any idea. So the challenge was everybody was getting into this technical debate about we have this much memory, we have this spec, this spec, this spec, trying to compete, and then Jobs came out, flipped it on its head and said, you can put a thousand songs in your pocket. I think about uh, an instance, one of my coaches called me recently and was talking about some patient that they were prepping to have this conversation around an implant supported denture. And the patient was like, you know, I, I have a choice of just a denture for like $1,500 or I could do an implant supported denture for four or 5000 or whatever the fee was. And the patient's like, you know, I just want to do the cheaper one. And the team was like, oh, you know, I, I, yep, we can't afford it. Can't afford it, right? The story we tell ourselves. And there's truth in that, that they were saying, I don't want to pay for it. The question is, did we just talk about an implant supporting a denture? Or did we talk about the benefit of an implant supported denture? And how can we do it graphically? Not to scare them, but to really connect the dots. Because I don't think the average person, especially in dentistry, has anywhere near enough knowledge to be able to connect the dots on what it is you're trying to tell them. In that case, it would have been interesting to have said, hey, right now with whatever you have, I don't know if this person has decay or denture or what, but whatever the case is, it'd be interesting to say, do you ever have a hard time chewing? Do you have a hard time eating corn on the cob? Are you embarrassed to go out on a dinner date with somebody, significant other or date, and sit there eating? Are you worried that literally your plate, as they often call them, is going to fall out of your mouth? Use their terms. Do you feel insecure about that? Are you insecure about being intimate? 
I mean, when you roll over in the morning, and I realize that you might be thinking I'm hitting kind of hard and going heavily personal in this case, and I guess you could say I am, but that's what you have to do. Because right now what they might have is they're afraid, they feel like they got to roll over, go get their denture and put it in before they're willing to kiss their sweetheart. Would it feel better to have something that's more permanent in your mouth? Something where you can have the confidence to be able to do whatever it is you want to do. That would be talking about the benefit of the product or service that you're offering your patients. As opposed to just talking about the features. Because I just don't see that people understand the features. I think what they want to buy is a better version of themselves. And if you can come in and show them how an implant supported denture or a cosmetic makeover will help them to be a better and different person. Because let's face it, do you know how liberating it is to transform yourself, to reinvent yourself? Have you ever done it? And I don't know if any of you ever have it, where you move across country, you get to start all over again and, and reinvent yourself. I've done it a few times. It is so liberating because you get to let go of all that old baggage. And what I'm really excited about in that case is to be a better person, to get to start over, wipe the slate clean, and start all over again. When you're talking to your patients about dentistry, are you equating the results you'll give them? And I realize you can't do this for like a little MOD filling, right? Not realistic. Although maybe, I don't know, because maybe you put in a nice pretty one and they didn't like the dark color of their amalgam. But look at how powerful it could be if you could show them how it would make them a better version of themselves.